All right, the deadly attack on a Moscow concert hall by the Islamic State Khorasan, also known as ISIS-K, has raised concerns that the terrorist group could potentially move to carrying out attacks in Europe and even here in the United States. ISIS-K, the Central Asian offshoot of the Islamic State terror uh, group, actually received room to grow and navigate in Afghanistan following the Biden administration's chaotic and deadly 2021 withdrawal. And the United States' porous southern border also is providing opportunities for more and more operatives to move into our country. Well, yesterday on ABC's This Week, former CENTCON commander, retired General Frank McKenzie, said that an attack by ISIS against the United States is inevitable. ISIS-K in particular, but, but ISIS in general, uh, has a strong uh, desire to attack our homeland. We should believe them when they say that. Uh, they're going to try to do it. And I, so I think the threat is growing. Uh, it, it, it's, it's begun to grow uh, as soon as we left Afghanistan and took pressure off ISIS-K. So I think we should expect further attempts of this nature against the United States, as well as our partners and other nations abroad. I think this is inevitable. Disturbing. Well, joining me now to discuss this and more is retired Army Lieutenant Colonel Robert McGinnis. He's the Senior Fellow for National Defense at the Family Research Council and the author of Divided We Stand, The Globalist Scheme for One World Government. Lieutenant Colonel McGinnis, welcome back to Washington Watch. Always great to have you. It's my pleasure, Jody. Okay, let's begin, if we will, by discussing ISIS-K. Uh, some people may be unfamiliar with uh, this group that attacked uh, the concert hall in Moscow. What do we know about ISIS-K? Well, they morphed from a, a series of radical groups that were in eastern Syria, northern Iraq years ago during the Obama administration. And then, of course, uh, they began to spread elsewhere in the Middle East, all the way to Afghanistan. And they really were in contest with al Qaeda and Taliban. And of course, when we departed uh, at Mr. Biden's request, Afghanistan, you know, ISIS-K became more powerful, but they're still in opposition to uh, the Taliban. Now, at the same time, they've got tentacles located in places like Tajikistan uh, to the north, and that's apparently where the four suspects that were involved in the Moscow attack on the 22nd of March came from. ISIS-K is as radical an Islamic group as we've ever seen to include al-Qaeda, and they have tentacles not only in Central Asia, but all the way to Northern and Central Africa. So yes, they are ambitious, uh, as General McKenzie indicated, and rightly so. Uh, they would like to attack the great Satan, the United States, and we'll do everything possible to do that. And I think you're right. We need to be concerned uh, that something like that could happen in this country as well. Well, uh, particularly when you look at our southern border, wide open. Uh, we've had millions and millions and millions coming mm -hmm. to our southern border, many of whom we have absolutely no idea who they are, uh, many of which got away that we, we have clueless, uh, totally clueless on who they are, what their intentions are, but you would think those who sneak in without even any degree of uh, communication with our uh, border personnel, they're probably here for nefarious reasons. Now, I, you mentioned something that I'd like to get a little more understanding on, that ISIS-K uh, had room to grow and navigate and swell, if you will, through uh, Afghanistan after the uh, withdrawal of U.S. troops. Uh, what did that allow them to do specifically? Well, with our departure, they had not only more equipment uh, that the Taliban didn't claim, but also more freedom of navigation. And of course, uh, they, they expanded their reach. Uh, the, the whole idea, of course, is, of course uh, 
Hassan, is you know, really about the, the origin of the, the Islamic State. It's the synergy of that um, radical group. And so they expanded. Uh, they've, of course, expanded into the Southern Caucasus region. And, you know, one of the reasons I suspect they went after the, the Moscovites was because of the Chechnya battle that uh, claimed tens of thousands of Muslim lives in 1990, but also because of the uh, history of the Soviets in Afghanistan in the 1980s. So uh, they're a very vicious group of people, very radicalized with their, uh, a radical version of Islamic faith, and they would do everything they can to come to this country. And I suspect, uh, you know, that it's correct, not only General McKinsey, but FBI Director Ray, you know, said the light is blinking with regard to the threat of terrorism in the United States. Yeah, and I tend to agree. I haven't seen it as bad, um, you know, as since really 2001. And at that point, I was at the Family Research Council, and I recall that attack that morning uh, on the Pentagon and all that the chaos that broke out. So what we could anticipate, perhaps, is that there will be an effort by ISIS-K, which likely already has uh, a, a number of its terrorists, you know, deeply embedded in the United States, uh, that they would like to use any mechanism of terror that they could. Um, and of course, they've always had, like Al-Qaeda, an interest in using weapons of mass destruction, chemical, biological, radiological you know, instruments. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean they would use those. What they would do is perhaps attack a nuclear facility, or they would let off some sort of bomb near a chemical site that would have a mass casualty impact. And, and these things are very, very serious, but I believe our intelligence community is very fixated on the potential of this happening. And as you indicate, Jody, with the open southern border, we've had many, many people that have crossed over that don't have our best interest in mind. So we've just got a couple of seconds. Do you likewise have red lights on a red flag that the U.S. is vulnerable? Oh, there's no doubt. We're vulnerable. We're vulnerable from the things I've pointed out, but also cyber hackers, uh, the Chinese, the Russians, and others that have our demise in mind. They like nothing thank better you. than the United States. Lieutenant Colonel Bob McGinnis, thank you so much.